On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2002. We're going to be taking a look at BJ Thomas, and he's going to be performing a medley of hits. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. First of all, thank you everyone for the requests to take a look at BJ Thomas tonight following the sad news that he passed away recently. I am going to be watching the whole video, it's about nine and a half minutes, this is his performance at the Grand Ole Opry and I will be jumping in about halfway through to point out a few things, so if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it then there is a link in the description below that you can click on to do that. But let's get BJ and the full band up on screen and let's just enjoy it. Thank you very much. for the radio I just can't help believing when she smiles up soft and gentle with the traces of a misty morning and the promise of tomorrow in her eyes and I just can't That's it. Yeah. Give it to me, buddy. It's lonely out tonight, and the feeling just got right for a brand new love song. I was close. Somebody done somebody wrong song Hey, won't you play another Somebody done somebody wrong song And make me feel at home While I miss my baby While I miss my baby So play, play it on me A sad melody So sad that it makes everybody cry A real hurting song For that love that's gone wrong Cause I don't wanna cry All alone just before you Yeah. 
Those raindrops are falling on my head and they keep falling. So I just do need some talking to the sun. going to jump in here bj thomas is one of those artists and one of those singers whose voice you know even if you don't know that you know it i mean that's a great example of it him singing raindrops keep falling on my head because i think everybody's heard that song even if you don't know who sang it it's been used in movies all over the place it's such a recognizable voice even if you don't know who he is as an artist but he's had so many huge hits and you can tell here that the way bj thomas sang was in a way that made the mic his instrument you can think about a guitarist a saxophone player, a drummer, anybody who's at a high level playing an instrument, BJ Thomas had that with his voice. And all you've got to do is watch this performance and look out for the way that he's using his microphone, his mic technique. He is really subtly adjusting where that mic is in relation to the phrase that he's singing. And he's got such a silky smooth sound to his voice, but he's achieving an even smoother sound by using that mic. The first thing to point out, you might have noticed right at the end of Raindrops Keep Falling On My Head, the way that BJ is just moving the mic uh, vertically closer towards his nose. And this is something that we can have a little look at, so. Nothing's worrying me. So now I've just paused it there so that we can get a bit of an appreciation of where his microphone is and just grabbing a mic here. Normally when you see somebody singing and when it might be on a microphone stand, obviously it's gonna be fixed there and it'll be directly in front of the vocalist. So it means everything that's coming from their mouth, all of the expression you might hear and all of the air is gonna be hitting that microphone, but Depending on the sound that BJ is singing, he changes the location of the mic because of the vowels and the sound that he wants to get. So, for example, here, we've got an E vowel when he says me, and the me is up here. It's all in your nose. It's got that nasal quality to it, whereas an O oh is more in the mouth. And this is what happens when you sing when you talk it's a mixture of your nose and your mouth that's where the sound is coming out of to the point where if you hum and you keep your mouth closed but then you pinch your nose i've done this before on the channel it stops the noise from coming out because the noise when you hum comes out of your nose so you go mm, and then you can't hum anymore so that gives you an idea of the fact that the notes that you're singing and when you're talking, some of the noise is coming out of your nose with an eval, most of the sound is coming out of your nose. So 
BJ Thomas knows this and to get a nice even balanced sound rather than losing some of that quality of the sound and that eval he's moving the mic up to his nose and here if I'm kind of turning to the same angle and then moving the microphone you can see it's kind of up in that kind of place right underneath his nose to get the resonance to get the sound of that vowel nice and clear across that microphone so it isn't just accidental or random where he's moving this microphone so look out for that when we do resume the video just these minor details the positions that he moves the mic into and i just want to show you guys this you might have noticed in the performance as well Look at that distance that BJ moves the mic away because of the volume of his voice. He wants it all to be even. He wants it to be balanced and smooth. So as soon as he hits a higher note, he knows he's expelling more air. So he moves the mic away from his mouth in order to keep the volume consistent rather than having a peak on that one note. And it may be clipping or maybe just sounding a little bit too offensive to the ear. He just takes that mic away from his mouth in order to get a nice balanced sound. I'll just play that again so you guys can see it. This time the girl's gone. And then he just smoothly brings it back. There is so much mic technique involved here that will fly under the radar unless you're looking out for it. You might just think that they're random movements, but they're definitely not. We're going to watch the same phrase again, but I'm going to let it run on for a little bit more because once you start to notice it, you'll see it on the second phrase that he sings. He's just editing that mic position ever so slightly. This time the girl's gonna stay for more than just a bit. And the mic position here that BJ's using, he's so conscious of the sound that's going to be coming through to the audience. And for this whole performance, it is a common theme. You'll see the way that BJ is singing away from the microphone. And if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you will see how I always have the microphone off to the side so that the sound that you guys hear of me talking isn't plagued with air hitting the microphone because if I started pointing my face towards the microphone and kept on speaking like this the S's would be even more offensive and you'd hear pops when I have a P sound and you might even be able to hear it because I'm facing the mic and you'll get all these nasty peaks and it's going to be offensive to listen to because you hear the air hitting the mic we can see here that BJ hasn't got any foam to stop the air hitting the mic or at least trying to reduce that sound acting like that pop filter or popper stopper and whatever you want to call it. Having that often does help with the mics and that's why you see foam over the top of microphones all the time but here BJ doesn't have that sometimes the microphones have it within and within the grate as an SM58 has as I do have here but Pointing his head away means that he's minimizing those peaks that you'll get in the sound and making it as smooth as possible. So again, look out for this performance, the way that he's singing and it's going to be picking up his voice because it's pointed towards his mouth, but it's being pointed towards his mouth at an angle. There is so much going on with the movement that he's just putting that mic in that sweet spot that he knows will pick up his voice the best way for the audience and the overall sound. And this is something that a lot of singers don't do this. They just have it in front of their mouth and that is it. They don't think about the dynamics of their voice to the point where a lot of singers don't even know how best to EQ their own voice. They don't know how to bring out the richness or whatever they've got in their sound that they need to either minimize or maximize. For example, if you've got a really dull tone to your voice and there's not a lot of top end cutting through then you would put a little bit of a boost in the top end of your vocal sound and you'd have that going through the mixer but conversely if you have a really bright sounding voice you might take off a little bit of top end he experienced so much crossover success that his standing with the Grand Ole Opry where he's performing here initially he was inducted or introduced as the 60th member in 1981 of the Grand Ole Opry but then that was changed as then a guest artist 
because of the fact that the Grand Ole Opry is very much in the country realm and artists that sing in that genre and that style, but because BJ Thomas had so much success with gospel as well, he was then just a guest artist because he didn't fall strictly into that one genre or could be classed as that type of singer solely. And it really is a compliment to his ability and the way that he could sing, that he could turn his voice to any style, any genre, and still give a convincing performance and an authentic performance. But let's get back into this and we'll watch it all the way to the end. Thank you. I'll tell you what, that did sound pretty good, didn't it? I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that myself. All right, I want to do one for you that was a number one record for me. Uh, this was written, for, written by my, uh, my wife, uh, my lovely bride of 33 years, Gloria. And I'm going to do this for you. New look. Early this morning I opened my eyes And caught you watching me sleep I'm getting new looks from a whole other again I love you and want you forever and always Was written all over your face I'm getting new looks from a through my hair I'm getting new looks from an old lover again And deep in your eyes I see the hunger that only true love can feel I'm getting new looks from an old lover again Something you're feeling Knowing that I can still win What I've already won yeah. It's great to know We still can be lovers and friends And there we have it. So getting into that second part of the performance, when we joined it again, this last song that we have, New Looks from an Old Lover, really does show off his range, his ability to take his lead vocal up to an A flat four. I believe that's where we are here. I've just got the piano up on screen so we can use it as a reference point because Right at the end there, when we're getting up to that A flat four, we are around this area. This is the A flat four. And just one note higher, we can see is the A4, which you'll find being described as where the male tenor range tops out at, even though you will find males singing higher than that, and it's still being referred to as the male tenor range. And then even higher than that goes into the counter tenor range. But 
it really does show you the range that we've got in this performance by BJ Thomas. He's mostly around this baritone range to the point where he goes down to an E4. That is the highest note in raindrops I keep falling on my head. But then for the most part, he's an octave lower than that. So it means that he'll be down at E3. And when you start looking at this range you don't notice it when he's performing because of that tonal consistency that he has and he's never straining for notes you just accept that these notes are in his range but when we're going all the way down to that e3 you can see that it's well within that baritone range and he then just suddenly ups it all the way to this a flat four in that male tenor range to the top end of that range so really impressive from a range standpoint and it's something that you don't notice with the greatest singers because they just sing these notes without any strain and no evident change in that tonal consistency of their voice and certainly BJ Thomas was one of those vocalists that when you're listening to this whole performance you don't question the range but certainly when I was listening to this I was surprised at how high he went in that last song because an A flat four is way up there for most guys to even hit that note and consistently hit that note. It's not that he just flips up to and touches it, he's maintaining that in the chorus. So it is so impressive on so many different levels, this performance and just his voice overall, stylistically, the control that he has, that is the buzzword for the analysis. He's just got control of every single element of his voice, the mic technique, but also his range. He's got that wider vibrato when he wants it. He can sing straight when he wants to as well. He can inject that dynamic sound of having breath in the sound as well as just getting a really clean note. And he's got that vibrato that just goes above the note as well. It's quite wide in places but he's got it under control the whole time and having that ability to control the voice and apply different styles of vibrato means that he could sing different styles of music and he definitely did i do want to include a little bit of history and career information on bj in this video as well he started singing at a young age he would sing in the church choir and i think this is where the gospel influence came in where he would have a lot of success later on in his career as well and he started to join bands in his teenage years he joined a band called The Triumphs and then later on in his teenage years he'd meet Roy Head and this was Roy Head from Roy Head and The Traits and they would compete against each other in local Battle of the Bands competitions and this was in the early 60s. In 1966 Thomas and The Triumphs released an album called I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry and that included a cover of the song by the same name by Hank Williams and their version of that song sold over a million copies so it was a massive hit for them and a couple of years later in 1968 it would be the year that BJ Thomas now had a massive hit of his own called Hooked on a Feeling and that went on to sell over a million copies as well. It was in late 1969 that he released Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head and that was a huge hit. That was a Bacharach David composition by the way and it was featured in the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and it won an Academy Award for Best Original Song and in 1970 it got to number one and BJ Thomas would go on to sell over one million copies of that song again. Just to mention about his drug problems that he had and the fact that it would have been around this time, raindrops keep falling on my head, the success that he was having, he started to use a lot of drugs and I saw an interview with him where he just explains it that as a 15 year old he was given a tablet he was recording at the time and he was feeling tired, he wanted to go home but then somebody said have a tablet because then you won't need to sleep and it'll make you feel great and he did say in this interview it did make him feel great so he took one tablet and that turned into two and it kept on increasing I think it must have been the rule of diminishing returns when you take something and then you need to take more of it as your body gets used to it to get to the same place or the same feeling and that's exactly what happened to him to the point where he would wake up every day and have 40 tablets to try and get himself to the point or at least 
to get himself to feel how he wanted to feel and then 40 would turn into 80. He also said in the interview how he would order in bulk about 10,000 tablets so that he felt safe, that he knew he had a supply of them. And it got to the point where he thought he needed these drugs in order to just be able to sing and that if he stopped taking them he'd lose his singing ability. So. He was really in a bad way in the late 60s, early 70s, and this is certainly something that he then realised he needed help with, and his wife certainly helped him through those times in the early 70s, and through to the mid-70s is when he was then starting to get a real handle on it and get things under control. It was in 1975 that he released another song that we've just heard, Hey, Won't You Play Another Somebody Done Somebody Wrong Song, which is the longest titled number one ever and it went on to sell over a million copies again another monster hit in 1976 he then released a gospel album and that was called home where i belong and that was hugely successful in fact it was the first ever christian album to go platinum and in 1981 is when he became that 60th member of the grand Ole art pre but then that was changed to guest artist because of the amount of success that he had in so many different genres but he achieved so much in his career uh, far more than i can mention in just this video but more recently in 2013 he released the living room sessions and that was an album of well-known hits that have been a arranged acoustically and in 2013 his version of Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame and sadly he passed away on the 29th of May 2021 aged 78 and it was from lung cancer stage 4 lung cancer he was diagnosed with just nine weeks ago I believe so it was a very short time between the diagnosis and sadly him leaving us but it's great to have a look back at him here in full flow with his silky smooth vocal all of the technique that he had with the mic and just being able to use everything that he had to appeal to so many people across so many different genres which is such a difficult thing to do so many singers just stick with one particular sound but bj thomas could do it all Thank you guys for requesting this video. I hope you did enjoy it and I'll catch you guys at the next one.